Good morning, YouTube. It is another day of handstand training for me. And as I put out updates on my strength and flexibility progress in the past two videos, I thought it's time to have a look at the progress I've made in the handstands. All right, different tripod. Let's have a look at the progress that I've made in the handstands so far in 2023. So over 200 days have passed in Paul's yearly challenge and I've been on my hands every single day in one way or another. Now most of these days I've been able to practice freestanding handstands but the wrist injury or issues that I've been dealing with have meant that in some cases I've only been able to focus on some of the wall drills or if it's particularly bad on the day all I can really manage is some of the wrist strengthening exercises. So the lesson that this has taught me is that no matter what the injury or the setback is that you are dealing with, there's always something that you can do that's gonna contribute incremental progress to the bigger picture. In the space of six months, my handstand has gone from looking like this to looking like this, which is a significantly improved Meaning if line. you were to draw a straight line from the hands where they are on the ground, up to the feet, most of the major joints in the body would touch that line or be pretty close to it. In January, my alignment would have been pretty good a couple of times, but partly down to luck, and I certainly didn't have the same understanding of the different body parts and how they comprise a solid handstand as I do now. Similarly, my best hold time has increased substantially. In January, it was 28 seconds, and in July, the best time achieved was 42 which is a 50% increase, meaning if I carry on improving at the same rate, I'll hit a 63 second handstand before the end of the year. I don't think it is necessarily gonna work that way, however, as there's still plenty of room for improvements to my alignment. There's a pretty good argument to be made that minor adjustments and improvements to my alignment could well add five to 10 seconds to the freestanding holds. And it's also worth pointing out that I can comfortably hold a wall facing handstand for at least 60 seconds, so the strength endurance is already there. I've also heard some people argue that a wall facing handstand is actually slightly more difficult because you're not in a balanced position, instead your weight is leaning on the wall, which is harder to hold for time. So with all of that aside, what are the main lessons that I've learned this year regarding handstands? First of all, I've found that preparation definitely does not correlate with success. Unlike the famous phrase, fail to prepare and prepare to fail, I find that this doesn't really hold true with learning to handstands, and I think it's probably the case for almost all skill acquisition. Some of my best days practicing freestanding handstands just haven't really started very well. Either I've woken up late and planned, I've taken a lot longer to get going and get into my rhythm, or the warm-ups haven't gone very well, and I haven't started out particularly optimistic yet somehow everything seems to fall into place and it just clicks. Second up is that perseverance is absolutely crucial. A lot of days practicing have resulted in quite a bit of frustration where I just haven't been able to hold a decent handstand for any amount of time, or I've really struggled with the accuracy of the kickups. In these situations, I've found it particularly important to try to detach my mental state from the practice and not to start making up stories as to why it's not going very well. It might be that you start thinking, I didn't prepare the right way, I didn't do enough of a specific drill, or I had the wrong thing for breakfast, or I didn't sleep enough hours at night. Regardless of what it is, I find the minute you start telling yourself these stories as to why something isn't going well, you give yourself license for it to not go well. So don't do that. Third up is consistency. Now, this is a really common piece of advice to come across for practicing handstands. A lot of people will tell you that you have to practice daily or at least on a very frequent basis. Now, it's certainly really good advice, but I think it's missing an important piece, which is not only practicing consistently, but practicing the same way consistently. And I think this accounts for all of the minor details when it comes to handstands. So such as the hand position that you're using, the type of kick up that you're attempting, whether that be the gymnastic style kick up with your arms starting overhead and using straight legs, or perhaps it's a kick up to a split and then you come to balance, 
or even it could be more of a bent leg kick up. But the important thing here is the fewer variables there are in the way that you're practicing, the easier it is to refine your technique and also measure your progress. Just because the first or maybe even one kick up attempt isn't successful, it doesn't mean you have to start changing things. Keep your hands where they are. Don't adjust the distance between them or the orientation. Keep your shoes on or don't put them back on, whichever it may be, and keep practicing the same kick up. Next up, what you measure and how you measure your progress are equally important. You'll often hear people saying that progress is not linear. Now, I'm one of those people and I have said that in the past, but in reality, this depends on the scale that you're using. If you're tracking your progress on the micro level, so let's say on a daily basis, this might indicate that your progress appears to be completely random and it's all over the place. But if you zoom out, so you're having a look from the macro level, let's say monthly, it could well be linear. On the other hand, if you are tracking your average hold time, there's every chance that this could see incremental progress in a linear fashion at the micro level, so on a daily basis, despite the fact that your best hold time has not progressed in a linear fashion. And I've found that these metrics that you choose to measure can have an enormous impact on both your motivation and your willingness to practice on a daily basis. So it's a really, really good idea to measure the things that are most important to the goal, but also find something that will also contribute to your motivation and ensure that you're happy to wake up every day and crack on. Finally, make sure you always have one eye on the bigger picture. Ultimately, my end goal is to incorporate the handstands with a much bigger practice in the way that Edo does in this video. A variety of entries used to enter a variety of handstand positions, be it on two hands or on one hand, but also the freedom to play within these different positions. I'm not all that interested in static, aesthetically pleasing hand balancing. Instead, I just see it as a necessary step on the journey. For this reason, I try really hard not to get held up on the rate of success and how quickly I'm progressing, or the idea that I have to have mastered the handstand before I can practice other things. As a good example, I never learned to cartwheel as a kid. Despite the fact that my handstand is kind of average at best, this isn't going to stop me from playing around and trying to learn the cartwheel simultaneously. And it's the same reason why I am practicing other skills such as the QDR. These are all uniquely challenging in their own way. But most importantly, they're a lot of fun and they actually provide a bit of light relief to the seriousness of the structure training. I am going to leave you with that thought for now. So I hope you find some fun in your training today, whatever you get up to. As ever, thanks for watching.